On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, we're off Marathon in the fabulous Florida Keys. We'll be catching flag yellowtail, blackfin tuna on a hump, and dolphin and wahoo offshore. I'll be with Ariel Madero. Do not miss this episode. <laughs> Almost world of saltwater fishing, celebrating 20 years of fishing television excellence. Big fish don't stand a chance. There's something about catching yellowtails, more specifically, big flag yellowtails, that drive people by the thousands into the fabulous Florida Keys. And this particular trip was no exception. I've enjoyed excellent yellowtail fishing throughout the entire Florida Keys chain and many a time for the big ones. And the big ones were exactly what Ariel Madero and I had planned on doing off Marathon in the Florida Keys. Had the Mark 6 in town, we're at the Hyatt Ferro Blanco Marina. A few days before the, the trip, I talked to George and uh, I told him the fishing was a little bit tough. But I did uh, notice there was a big school of yellowtails in one of the spots that I, that I like to fish and um, I figured we'll try to target them on the first day. I can't say enough good things about Aero Madero. He's one of those true gems in an area that does his job extremely well because he lives for it. He's passionate about it. So I was thrilled when he and I were back aboard the Mark 6. We had loaded the Mark 6 with live pilchards. The goal was to go out there and live chum these bigger yellowtails, the smarter ones, into getting crazy and careless to where we could catch them. Before I anchor, I always like to mark a school of, of fish down there. Um, so I drive around. Sometimes I even drag a chum bag while I'm looking around. If, uh, if you see some life there, it's, it's probably a good spot. So Ariel gave me the word. I dropped the anchor, started freelining it out until we got a good bite, gave it some more scope until he said right about here. Then I cleaned it off. Once we were on the hook, time the chum. It was time to let those fish come up. And to my surprise, we were on that hook no sooner than four or five minutes, and I look behind the Mark VI, and you see these large golden balls of yellowtail. Looks like the right kind. Yeah, it does. And a beauty at that. Ah, <laughs> good job, great fish. <sighs> It's, it's intrigued by the size of them. And, and, <laughs> right? and it's, I'm sitting here like almost speechless because we're getting these beautiful tails that look at them by the hundreds, how big they are sitting there on top of the, this is crazy. That pelcher doesn't take long. Oh, you need a net. Look at that fish here. Net meant coming. Jeez. I'm loving this. The ultra's on live bait. You gotta love it. I'm telling you, like, ah, the net just pulls those bigger ones and coming up, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it doesn't work every time, but when it does, it's when a it does, and, and thankfully it's working now. They were nice high fish. They were, you know, two, two to three pound fish, and uh, it was just, just as good as it gets. Again, just quality yellowtail fishing, the way you would hope it would be, and it was going off in Marathon in the fabulous Florida Keys in 100 feet of water. This is why people come down to the Keys to dream of catching yellowtails in this size class. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn, let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. George will be right back. The insane yellowtail bite has taken place off Marathon in the Florida Keys. I'm with Ariel Madero and we are bailing the flags. Just the fact that we were catching those yellowtail right off the bat with a piece of the shrimp, and these were the nice yellowtails too. Then Ariel decided 
it's time to step up the game. He said, there's big yellow tails in here. They've seen everything around and you want to sort of make them stupid and compete with each other. And the way we do that is we take live pilchards, we'll throw handfuls out behind the boat. When you see them going crazy in the top, pitch out a live pilchard and that pilcher will hit the water and swim for maybe four seconds, if that long, and you'll be on to some of the bigger yellowtails. Let me know when you need the net. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably use the net. I don't want to gamble anymore. <laughs> Perfect hookup. That is pretty awesome. With the yellowtails getting so crazy on that live chum, we decided, well, you know, we're catching that will with the live pilchard baits. Let's sort of step it up a little bit and try to get a couple on artificials, which was a very easy task. We pitch out some live pilchards, then they were blown up, and Ariel took the Rapala twitching mullet. Yeah, I got him on the lure. Oh, oh fantastic. See, see if I can keep him on. Here, I'll put that behind you. They get the net on floral. Lure caught fish. Check this out. It shows you how crazy you, you, when you yeah. like some of those tails. Got them on the twitching mullet. Because look yeah. at you said it just looks like the pilcher. Look at that. Little sandy key. I mean the golden color. It looks exactly like it. All right, well you got your live chum and these fish. So what is the secret after you get them on top? To catch them artificial. Do you hit it? Do you work it? Well, I you think doing? if you just keep casting out there on top of the fish. They get smart. They get used to that lure, uh -huh. and they don't eat it as much. If you wait for the fish, you chum a few live baits, wait for the fish to start chasing them up on the surface, yeah. and you cast your lure right in the middle, you're going to get a bite. And that bait hit the water maybe for one or two twitches tops, and bam, he was on a yellowtail snapper, fooled him on a Rapala artificial lure. Big yellowtail. This was, uh, it was the, like the perfect day. We went out there. It was a little bit bumpy, but not too bad. There weren't many boats out there. The fish were biting. We were down by 12.30 heading home with a box full of fish. So we pulled the hook, headed to the barn, as I like to say, and uh, it was time to clean some fish and then uh, wash down the Mark Six with some good Star Bright and get it all cleaned up for day two. Our base of operation in this trip was the Hyatt Place Marathon in the Florida Keys and the Ferro Blanco Marina. Full service marina, fuel, they have water, shore power, and what I really appreciate about the area and the property is it's, it's convenient. If you're hungry, there's an outside bar and grill by the pool. If you want to step it up in quality, they have a beautiful restaurant downstairs. The guest rooms themselves range from single and double rooms to full-blown suites. It's a very nice complex, relaxing, and the best thing about it is in the morning, you just walk downstairs, walk over your boat, jump in and go catch some fish. George Pofferomo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Rapala Coastal, another great day. Suffix, always use the best line. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. George will be right back. After a wide open yellowtail bite, Ariel Madero and I are back at it again off Marathon in the Florida Keys. Now, we're after blackfin tuna. Next morning, uh, a little bit breezier, you know, not too bad, definitely fishable in October, which is the, uh, the slow period for tourists. But then again, you start looking at your August, especially September, October, prime months for blackfin tuna on the humps, and also a very good period for dolphin. What I like to do when I get to the hump and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna live bait the hump, I normally get right on top of it and see which way the current is gonna take me. So once I get the drift, I just come, come up current and start making a little trail of live baits. I start pitching live baits behind the boat as we're moving up current. Uh, once I start seeing the fish busting on those baits back there, I normally put a spread of live baits out and keep chumming them. We're drifting towards the fish, and the fish are following those baits towards us. So I want, at some point, they're going to get closer to the boat, and you start getting some bites. Oh, oh, dude. There we go. Double up. 
sharks on his tail. You see the shark right there? Come here, buddy. Into the boat. Two sharks on him. <laughs> oh, God, big one on me, too. Oh, under the boat. I'm just swinging right in. Good job. <laughs> Do you see the sharks all over yeah, this guy? They're on, his, they're on their tail. Like I told George, uh, there were some sharks in the humps. Well, the sharks were there. So we started fishing, catch a few fish, and uh, anytime we hook a little bigger fish, the sharks were in their tail. Go, 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 get him. Oh, there we go. Oh, Damn, nice how fish. Do we, how do we get him out of the shark? Did you see he's all over? I think he helped you. He jumped out of the water. <laughs> like a sailfish. Yeah, that was crazy. Oh. Nice fish. Good eating size. Good gas. There you go. He's a flying too now. Ariel hook one, I hear him shouting and screaming, the shark's all over him, and he reels one up, flips it in the boat. Another blackfin and comes into Mark Six. I hook up, same thing, and these are, when you really lock down and down and dirty with these fish, and you're struggling trying to turn that reel handle and pull the fish, and they're running line off, and they're sharks. They're relatively very short bites, but when you're in that struggle, it seems like these things go on for like a half hour, and you never know who's gonna win until you see that tuna's head break the surface near the boat to where you have the leverage to flip it into the boat. At one point, we had the tunas all around the boat, and uh, I hooked a nice fish. It might've been on the 20 pound range, and uh, I thought I lost it. Next thing you know, I still had him. There were two or three sharks chasing him all around the boat. Oh, nice one. Oh, you want a gas? Yeah, probably. Uh, 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 <laughs> oh, shark's on his. <laughs> oh, no, don't need it. Oh, don't gotcha. need it. <laughs> oh, dang, I got the shark. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh <laughs> What the heck just happened there? And uh, George noticed that I needed a gaff, so he's running for the gaff. I'm trying to keep the sharks away, away from my tuna. Next thing you know, George go gaff the tuna, but I think he got the shark by mistake. The sh I think the tuna got away, but the shark got a little hole in his fin. George's tackle locker brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit KingSailfish.com. I've been a pen reels guy my entire life and they were the only brand of reels my dad would ever own. Given today's choices of reels, why do I still stick with pen? They catch big fish, period. I'm primarily an offshore angler, and the ocean is among the harshest of environments. Reels take a beating out here, from battling punishingly strong fish to constant saltwater rinsings from rough seas. Pen weathers the challenges amazingly well. Let's take a look at why. Their Spin Fisher 6 reels, for example, feature full metal bodies. This means that under heavy pressure, like when cranking on the big fish, there's no flexing which can offset and damage gearing. On the subject of gears, the smooth and performance and durability of these reels result from their drive, pinion, and oscillation gears being cut to exact tolerances and a five plus one sealed stainless steel ball bearing systems. When strong running fish are hooked, quick heat dissipation from Penn's HD100 carbon fiber drag washers maintain uniform and smooth performances. Read, no erratic or sticking drags. And last but certainly not least, the entire Spinfisher 6 line features pens, IPX5, sealed bodies and spool designs, the company's strongest protection to date against saltwater intrusion. Pen, when it comes to taking on the toughest saltwater has to offer, they're at the head of the class. Mercury Performance Stats, Marathon Florida Keys. Seas, three to five feet, power, Triple 400 horsepower Mercury Verado outboards. Props, Mercury Inertia Eco 21 inch pitch. Consistent cruise, 3,700 RPM. Speed, 37 miles per hour. Total miles traveled, 94. Total fuel burned, 89 gallons. George Pofferomo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. The Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are.
Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a spectator. Starbright, professional grade book care products. The focus on the black and tunas on the humps, we were so intently focused on chumming them, but then baiting them and trying to horse them away from the sharks when I didn't see, Ariel didn't see, this big yellow navigational buoy. We pull right up to the buoy, we have a look around, a lot of bar jacks, smaller fish, start drifting away from it. Ariel grabs a spinner, throws it out, and he goes, here a cup of mahi. Come on. Sure looks like dinner. <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fish. And man. you just got him just direct trolling that belly right behind him. Yeah, just pitch a belly hole there, reel it in fast, and they came behind a couple of them. Those colors. Uh, if you want to hold this, and I'll open that box. And, and I said, I just knew that if we could get to that buoy and no one else hounded it, that we would find fish. Before we made another pass, we decided to drag a, a lure. Uh, Waku lure in one of the on one of the flats, and we had a bali on the other one. Uh, so the first pass, I think we had two or three waku bites, and we finally hooked one solid. Oh, got him on! I told you. <laughs> Let me get away from that buoy. Jump me off. Oh, stay on. Nice. Right, stay on, buddy. He's zigging on the top there. Yeah. I'll be on going to your right side here, okay? Yeah, good shot. Be careful. Lure came out. <laughs> yeah! Wahoo! <laughs> yeah! Whoa! Look at that beauty. After I got my Wahoo in the boat, I can notice George wanted to catch his Wahoo. I'm on the, the CD18 rod now, keeping the rod tip pointed towards the water and on one of the passes, we get uh, probably maybe 100 feet away from the buoy after we passed it, and then bam. Woohoo! Yummy! Just That's turn our around flavor. and keep dragging him out. Let's, uh... I think we could turn him, just keep Uh, maybe. <laughs> that plug is going right by, and then that thing just gets drilled, and, and as soon as they feel it, 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 it's a hesitation, like you snag something. Yeah. <laughs> and they run a little bit, then all of a sudden they feel it and they just go nuts. Let me know when you see Carter. All right, he's almost, hey, I feel the head pumping. He's almost straight up and down here. He should be coming up right here. Yeah, it's color. Oh, nice one. <laughs> Look at that size of that one, baby. Whoa. Yeah. Unreal. What? <laughs> are, are we Man. just showing off the Florida Keys during the off season or what? October fishing, nothing like it. <laughs> it is, you're right. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, by the time we got the second wahoo in the bow, we had two wahoos, a couple of nice mahis, plenty of tuna. Uh, I think it was only like 11.30. So we decided uh, it was time to go home. So on the morning of our third day, we had the honor of meeting Henry. Henry is a green turtle that was rehabilitated by the Turtle Hospital. Education is a big part of our mission. There are seven species of sea turtles in the world and all seven species are listed as either endangered or threatened. So the Mark 6 is going to take Henry into the backcountry behind Marathon in the Florida Keys and release Henry into its environment. So we hit our spot, open up the, uh, the tuna door on the Mark 6, looked at Henry, Wished Henry very well. Betty and I took Henry, put it right in the water, and that turtle was ready to go back to its environment. We let it go, and it just took off. But uh, it just goes to show you the turtle hospital and the caliber of people they have there that care so much about uh, our marine environment. So that was a very special morning, um, meeting Henry and turning Henry free. Uh, my trip to Marathon in the Florida Keys was a home run. I mean, we hit that ball so far out of the park, it wasn't even funny. I think it ended up in another zip code. And just to be back fishing again with Aero Madero is a real pleasure. Just the nicest guy. And uh, everything seemed to come together. 
I mean, uh, we went yellow tailing and it was as good as it gets. But the next day we went offshore, caught the tunas, found floating debris, caught wahoos, dolphin, everything came together. And uh, I mean, October, but the fish are here. It's a perfect time to come out and catch quality fish. And that's exactly what Ariel Madero and I did. Another great trip to Marathon in the fabulous Florida Keys. If you'd like to keep up with our fishing adventures, please follow me on Instagram. I'm at George Poveromo. On Facebook, I'm at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. And you can view our episodes at any time on our YouTube channel, George Poveromo TV. We'll see you out on the water.